It's a quiet evening in Utah when suddenly, an American satellite lands near Piedmont, and two teenagers that happen to be nearby decide to take it to town in their truck. By the time the military arrives, the satellite's already gone, and when they drive to town, they find bodies everywhere. A man named Kyle tries to ask the soldiers for help, but soon they're all falling dead as well because of an infectious disease outbreak of unknown origins. The head of the Army's Biological Defense Group, General Manchek calls Beter, the director of the National Security Council to inform him of the situation and let him know they're already quarantining the area. Beter promises he'll take care of communicating with President Scott and Manchek is authorized to activate the wildfire protocol, which summons five very important scientists in cases of a potential high-level bioterror threat. In the Peterson Air Force Base, Manchek meets with the team. There's Jeremy, head of this project, C, a microbiologist that used to help the Chinese government with biological weapons, Charlene, a pathologist, Bill, a virologist and army major that stopped a biological attack in the past, and Angela, a biologist specialized in exotic diseases. Manchek shows them the footage taken by a drone and informs them they seem to be in the presence of a biological agent they've codenamed Andromeda. They don't know why the satellite fell, and C finds it suspicious that they're keeping it so secret. While watching the footage, Angela notices one of the bodies move, which means there are survivors. Meanwhile investigate reporter Jack meets with his friend Weezer that has acquired some secret information about something called Project Scoop in the hands of Manchek and a video of the soldiers dying in Piedmont that he got thanks to his hacking skills. After buying the video, Jack calls Jeremy's old house and the doctor's ex-wife tells him Jeremy was picked up by the army without explanation. Jeremy, Angela, and Bill are sent to Utah to retrieve any possible survivors while Manchek receives a worrying call from his right-hand Ferris, telling him Jack has somehow acquired some information. Manchek orders him not to touch Jack yet, only to keep an eye on him and concentrate on finding his source. Speaking of Jack, he goes to see his producer Charlie, who isn't happy to see him because Jack is supposed to be in rehab. However, he changes his mind when he hears the information Jack has and gives him three days to try to get the news properly. In the meantime, Weezer is stopped by the police in the middle of the road. Suspicious, he calls Jack's number so his inbox can record what happens. This turns out to be the smart thing to do, because when the cop comes closer, he kills Weezer on the spot and steals his phone. In Piedmont, the team discovers there has been a fire, and that the birds so far haven't been affected, but their helicopter drops chlorazine to kill the birds and avoid any risks. Once the team lands, they begin checking out the bodies, discovering that while most of them show the same symptoms, some of them died in different circumstances, but they do all have one thing in common, nobody is bleeding. Using the tracking system from the army truck the dead soldiers left there, the team finds and retrieves the satellite, which had been opened by the locals. When Angela checks the veins of the dead body near the satellite, she discovers there isn't any blood in them, only dust. Afterward, the team enters a store to check the security cameras and discover some of the people affected by this disease went crazy, going as far as ending things themselves. Suddenly Angela hears some crying and follows it to find a colicky baby that they take away with them. Kyle also finds them and attacks them, so Jeremy knocks him out to bring him into the helicopter as well. The team then leaves without seeing there's a dog around too. After getting these updates, Manchek calls Beter to inform him and the president there's a high chance they'll need to nuke the area. Stock and his men get furious with Beter because they never were told about Project Scoop, and the president decides that before jumping to nuke so quickly, he'll let the scientists see if there's a less dangerous way to take care of this. Meanwhile, Jack hears the sound of a gunshot coming from Weezer's message in his inbox. He calls Charlie to tell him he's found out soldiers have been ordered around by Beter, who shouldn't have that power, and asks him if he can find out where Weezer is. The team, the satellite, and the survivors are taken to an isolated underground laboratory powered by a small water-cooled nuclear reactor. Jeremy, Angela, and Bill are put through thorough contamination, and afterward, Jeremy explains that in case of a contamination breach, a 15-minute self-destruct sequence would automatically start and only Bill's key and thumbprint can stop it. To avoid having the team spill the beans to reporters, Manchek sends his communicator officer to lie to the team, saying communication is down for now. Afterward, the team begins running some tests. The satellite is two or three generations old, and it wasn't made for communication or navigation, it seems to be a biocontainment vessel, which confirms Manchek has been lying. It also has some black substance on it that could possibly be Andromeda. While Charlene and Bill experiment with animals, Angela checks on the survivors and Jeremy begins to think Manchek has isolated them on purpose. Outside Piedmont, a whole military operation is being set up, and Jack tries to interview them for TV, but not even the soldiers know what they're doing there. Then, Jack gets a call from Charlie, who confirms Weezer is dead. After he returns to the city to identify the body, Jack deals with the grief by buying some illegal substances, and he discovers he's being followed. Back in the lab, Jeremy asks the security guard outside if he has a phone he can borrow and uses it to leave a message for Jack, telling him he has important intel. By analyzing the black substance, C finds Andromeda and discovers it was made with nanotechnology light years ahead of current Earth technology. Angela checks on Kyle again, who finally wakes up in panic. 
After being told he's been quarantined and he can't leave, Kyle tells Angela his medical history, including the fact they used to have an ulcer. Angela asks him what happened that night, but Kyle doesn't know much. The teens took the satellite to the fire station because the chief used to be an engineer, and Kyle had been there playing cards with him. He only left a few minutes to buy a drink, and when he came back, everyone was either dropping dead or ending things themselves. Afterward, the team gets together to discuss what they've found out so far. Andromeda is the size of a single cell and transmitted by air, but they think corpses can't transmit it. It's also been engineered, thus it can't be simply a natural organism that got lost in space. The most shocking discovery though is the fact Andromeda doesn't have DNA, which proves it's alien. In Utah, the dog leaves town and is eaten by predators, who are starting to pass the disease among the animal population. Jack manages to get inside the military camp by sneaking inside a food truck, and the snacks earn him the soldier's favor. While he's asking some questions, he gets a call from Jeremy, who is using the guard's phone again. Jack tells Jeremy about the soldier's mysterious orders and in return, Jeremy tells Jack about Andromeda. Meanwhile, in a diner 40 miles south of Piedmont, a sheriff arrives with a headache only to suddenly kill everyone in the room. Manchek is informed of this incident and comes to the conclusion the sheriff had passed through Piedmont, leaving before they secured the area. He also gets a call from the lab guard with a message from Jeremy requesting communication to be up again if they don't want Jack to talk about Project Scoop on TV. Not having any other choice, Manchek calls the scientists, still denying that communications were actually working but accepting to tell them the truth about the satellite. NASA astronomers discover the sudden appearance of a wormhole in our solar system, which could potentially be the way to explore other parts of the galaxy. The satellite had been built to explore these possibilities and perhaps even bring back samples of living organisms. They don't know what exactly happened to the satellite when it approached the wormhole, but it suddenly became erratic and fell right before the wormhole closed. Seeing as this further confirms the alien origin of Andromeda and the fact they've had a breach from the quarantined area, they need to act fast, meaning the president authorizes them to nuke the area before it spreads more. The soldiers begin moving further away not to be affected by the radiation, but they end up dead when a bird drops a dead rat carrying Andromeda near them. Only one of them survives and takes a truck to return to camp, where Jack is snooping around and finds out there's special equipment to collect biosamples. When the truck arrives, crashing against everything in its path, Jack records it with his phone. He tries to send the video to Charlie, but he's suddenly arrested by a group of soldiers that take the phone from him. A pilot is sent with the nuke, but at that moment, the scientist discovers Andromeda can feed on radiation. They immediately call the White House to cancel the bombing and the orders reach the pilot just in time, but when she's about to fly back, her plane begins malfunctioning and the nuke falls anyway. The people in the army camp are fine, but seismic stations are picking this up all over the world, so Scott orders his PR team to tell them one of their planes malfunctioned and fell during a test. Jeremy argues with Manchek, thinking they're being lied to again, but Charlene checks the pilot's last transmission and confirms Andromeda caused the malfunction because it's mutated and it now can consume nylon. It probably reached the jet either through the smoke from the fire when it flew over the area. Finding the dead soldiers outside the perimeter also confirms Andromeda has mutated to be able to travel from dead bodies and animals. Meanwhile, Beter gets a call from Charlie, who reveals he did get the video from Jack. Beter still denies knowing anything and promises to look into it before calling Ferris to ask him to take care of any loose ends. Ferris arrives at the camp and shows Jack that they have pictures of him buying illegal substances, but this isn't enough to bribe Jack into telling him what he knows. While chlorazine and flamethrowers are used in the area to kill all the contaminated animals because Andromeda is moving even more quickly with each mutation, Jack is put in a helicopter to be taken away from the camp. However, Jack gets suspicious when Ferris gives his guard a bag claiming it's Jack's when it actually isn't. Once they're flying far enough from the camp, Jack distracts the guard by opening a fire extinguisher. The smoke causes the pilot to land and Jack jumps off the plane, which suddenly explodes. His instincts had been right, the bag had been a bomb to stop him from returning to the city. By the time Ferris and his soldiers arrive to check the wreckage, Jack is gone, and Ferris sends a bunch of men to find him. Back in the lab, Angela manages to get information from the crazy sheriff's doctor and learns he had two incidences of ketoacidosis. After watching the mutated structure for a while, Jeremy and C theorize that Andromeda can communicate among its separate parts. This is confirmed when they discover that a separate Andromeda sample that hadn't been experimented on is also adapted to the threat. Jeremy checks with Manchek and his scans, which show Andromeda is moving in direction of the river because it's intelligent and wants to contaminate the water to reach more areas, this direction would also take it to Las Vegas. Manchek orders to evacuate the city and shut down all airports to attempt to contain it. Later, Angela is having a nap when she suddenly dreams about being back in Piedmont, seeing Kyle play cards with his friends and remembering what he said about his medical history. This finally gives her the answer she's been looking for, the baby, the sheriff, and Kyle all suffered from acidosis, meaning Andromeda can only live in a very narrow range of acidity. Developing an acid to kill it is possible, but that solution would kill humans as well, and Andromeda could send a message to mutate accordingly anyway. 
Meanwhile, Scott is dealing with one more problem. A group of environmental protesters has used violence to take over a controversial thermal vent mine that the president had been championing. The team discovers Andromeda has binary code in its structure, which brings the theory of it being a message from the future, warning them or expecting them to do something about it. The only thing Earth has in the present that can't be in the future must be some natural resource that we used up or destroyed. They change from binary to ASCII to decipher the code and finally get to see the message. There's a number, a symbol with interlocking triangles, and the words Bacillus and Furnace, which translates to bacteria from hell. Bill recognizes it from past work, it's a bacteria that can only be found deep in the ocean and can survive extreme environments like very acidic pH. It also is harmless to humans and feeds on sulfur from the vents, which is what Andromeda is made of. The president's vent mining must have destroyed all the bacteria, explaining why they don't have it in the future to keep Andromeda at bay. No matter how much it mutates, Andromeda can't change its basic sulfur composition, so Bacillus and Furnace is the perfect solution to destroy it. The scientists call the president to ask for a sample from the vents, and Scott is desperate enough to authorize it. In the meantime in Utah, a young couple is fooling around when the boyfriend takes a break to relieve himself. While doing number two, a rat bites his rear, and he immediately begins feeling sick. Seeing as his boyfriend is getting violent, Layla decides to get in their car and drive away. Ferris calls Charlie to tell him Jack is dead, but actually, Jack is wandering around until eventually, he comes across Layla and asks for her phone, but she doesn't have signal. Nearby, the soldiers guarding the borders are attacked by infected birds, causing a dead body to fall in the water and begin spreading Andromeda through the river as well. Beter isn't happy with Scott's decisions and sends Ferris to kidnap Charlene's family. In the lab, the scientists confirm Bacillus and Furnace can kill Andromeda and begin growing it in biological breeder vessels that will accelerate the process. While she's working, Charlene gets a call from her husband and Ferris, who gives her a warning, if she wants to see her family again, she must hide away a sample of Andromeda. Afterward, the team has another meeting because Jeremy wants to inform them that Andromeda is smarter than it looks, there's a high chance it attacked the plane on purpose to get the nuke and feed. This means that now they have the weapon they needed, they have to destroy every Andromeda sample in the lab before it learns what they're doing. Charlene volunteers to do the destroying so she can keep a sample. Meanwhile, Andromeda mutates again, thanks to its contact with water, and now it's advancing incredibly fast on land too. Layla and Jack can see it change the color of the plants and when it comes closer, they begin driving away. Some of the soldiers that are after Jack get killed, but enough of them escape, starting a car chase as they open fire. Layla's car begins losing oil when they hit a rock, but this gives Jack an idea. When they reach a tunnel under a bridge, they park the car sideways to block it, then Jack uses his t-shirt to light it on fire before escaping with Layla on foot. After a few hours, the Bacillus and Furnace is finally ready, and Manchek and his pilot stop by the lab to pick up the containers. While the army begins covering Piedmont and the surrounding area, an alarm suddenly goes off in the lab, the computer detected contamination when Charlene tried to retrieve the sample she hid and the lab will soon self-destruct. This alarm has lots of flashing lights that triggered C's photosensitive epilepsy, and his seizure causes him to accidentally destroy the self-destruct control panel on their lab level of the building. To stop the alarm, they'll have to go to another level, but all doors and elevators have been sealed off. The only way up turns out to be through the exhaust vent above the radioactive water. Once C is feeling better, Angela takes over the computer and gives Jeremy and Bill directions to know where to climb. Unfortunately, the escaped Andromeda is deteriorating the pipes, and Bill notices he's about to fall, so he passes the key to Jeremy before plunging to his death. The problem is that they also need the thumb, thus C decides to sacrifice himself by jumping into the radioactive water to get the thumb, which he tosses at Jeremy before dying as well. With Angela's guidance, Jeremy reaches the next level though he gets wounded when he falls through the vent. With great effort, he drags his body through the floor and reaches the panel, effectively shutting down the self-destruction sequence. In Utah, Layla and Jack get far enough to finally get signal on the phone, so Jack calls Charlie to let him know about Ferris and the sample carriers. Manchek and his men fly above them but don't get to see them because they're too busy celebrating, the plan worked and Andromeda is being eaten away by Bacillus and Furnace. A few days later, a special funeral is organized to honor C and Bill. After the speech is over, Jack interviews the remaining members of the team. Jeremy is frustrated because Scott still refuses to shut down the vent mining project, so he takes the chance to speak against it on camera. Meanwhile, Manchek meets with Ferris to try to confront him about the stolen sample, but they both end up assassinated. In the end, a sample of Andromeda was still saved and sent by Beter to a space station orbiting Earth, where an astronaut puts it inside a container with the number and the interlocking triangles the scientists had seen on the code. This creates an ontological paradox that indicates this is the same container that will later travel through the wormhole. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.